it's good. Uh, so, so, so we don't forget that. But anyway, you know, you, you know what they say, be careful what you expose yourself to, because it will have an effect on you. Right. So you always got to have defenses up, but apparently I didn't have any defenses up when you all were chatting about the weather. Oh. And for some reason, all of a sudden I had this chill and I feel depressed and I feel just really down because of all that, all those bad weather reports. However, I'm going to look out at the beautiful Atlantic Ocean and the white clouds and the sunshine here in South Florida. I'm cured. Yes. Amen. <laughs> very nice. Very I nice. had to do that. I had to do that. <laughs> oh, just rub it in just a little bit. You started oh, with Atlantic. My. You said white clouds. I'm like, oh, it's a little overcast. And then he said sun. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you know, it's amazing, you know, with um, the state of Florida, you know, we have a, a good crisis, I guess, with the amount of people that have come in, especially during COVID. We already had it, the, the challenges, but then with the issues of COVID, of course, it added to it. And uh, it's it's just a wild, uh, wild, interesting place now. Um, I made that decision in 1986 from Baltimore. And it wasn't the cold as much as just the gray and dark clouds all the time. But I made that decision in 1986 and never looked back. Uh, so glad I made it. I just love South Florida. Uh, actually lived in Clearwater. My father started this, the whole thing in 81. He went to the Panhandle. He bought a campground in Destin, Florida. I got the Florida bug back then. Uh, but then it was it's way too cold up there. I settled in, uh, in 1986 when I was with Cowell Banker when it was owned by Sears. I I was very fortunate. I could kind of name my ticket wherever I wanted to go. So I, I went to the Tampa area and lived right on the Gulf of Mexico in um, Clearwater Beach, right south of Clearwater Beach, a little town called Bel Air Beach. I loved it. But even that was a little bit too cold. So the next move was the South Florida, uh, the East Coast. Um, it's amazing what that few hundred miles will even do. It's about eight degrees difference, nine degrees difference. So anyway, I, I just love Florida. I'm glad to be here. For all those of you who are not here, I'm sorry. Uh, my condolences okay <laughs> now sandy would de beg to differ with me she loves charlotte and i do too i love Charlotte. right you would beg to differ with me right sandy you love a charlotte. little bit uh, uh, florida's just a tiny bit too warm for my blood I i'm yeah. loving charlotte love the summers here but i'll come visit you anytime <laughs> yeah yeah during the winter right yeah uh, it's um uh i love the charlotte area the whole that whole area up there it's pretty cool but anyway, guys, you are in for another treat. We have Sandy back today. There are some housekeeping items I want to do uh, just quickly. Uh, I'll share my screen. Uh, I am really proud of you all, but not as proud as I can be. Uh, <laughs> make make me more proud, please. Um, number one, uh, you know, I do a lot. I could go out and sell an awful lot of real estate, but I don't because I'm busy running my own team and I'm busy running the real estate resource center. And I'm busy helping other people that are even outside my team. And then I do my coaching and consulting. But one of the people I'm really proud of is smartmortgage.com. They sponsor my real estate resource center that I have, which enables me to do a lot of volunteer stuff with among agents that are in crisis and stuff. So I really am proud of them. I thank smartmortgage.com if you need uh, someone that can move fast and quickly they're you know predominantly in the state of florida they can do business for private money money hard equity lines everywhere around the country so keep them in mind if you ever if you don't have your favorite mortgage person they're great they're fantastic and fast uh smart mortgage s-m-a-r-t-m-t-g-e.com they sponsor me so I wanted to bring that up. The other thing is uh, thank you all for last week after Sandy's story, uh, Ashley, who is one of ours, she's on the call today, uh, you know, overcoming her personal crisis. Some of you have gotten in contact with her and actually helped her financially. And also uh, seven of you joined her group in workplace. If you're with the XP Realty, I encourage you to go to Conquering Crisis and Healing with Community. This is fresh in Ashley's life. Um, I don't want to go into the detail because I'll choke up, but read her story. I encourage her to start this community for some help, number one, number two, but also to help with her healing process because what Sandy shared last week was unbelievable and had a great impact on Ashley's life. Sandy, I want you to know that she called me right after you talked and you reached out to her. That was unbelievable. Thank you so much for that. Also, many of you have been following Frank McKinney that we had as a guest a few weeks ago. You know, I've been involved with Frank many, many years with his building houses in Haiti. 
Uh, last week, I had the opportunity, uh, Saturday, I had the opportunity of being at the book launch of Adversitology. This is exactly what Sandy was talking about last week, her adversity, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But Frank, I, I knew the story after he revealed that he was uh, diagnosed with leukemia, but I had no idea until I started reading the book how how critical it was and how he almost died and so on and so forth after the life that he's led. So this book, Adversitology, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, I'm pleading you, I'm praying, I'm hoping, I'm wishing, I'm everything I can do is you go to amazon.com. You can just go to adversitology.com if you want adversitology.com or go to amazon.com. Order Adversitology. You're going to feed between 150 and 200 meals to children in Haiti. Frank does not make one dime off his books. He has the Caring House Project. I've been to Haiti with him. Every time you purchase one of these books, you feed 150 to 200 kids in Haiti who eat mud patties, you know, flavor with lemon bouillon to, to digest them. Uh, the work, the, the what the, this, this organization does is unbelievable. This book, let me tell you something, uh, it's, it's incredible. There's not anybody on this call that has not faced adversity. There's no one on this call that won't face even more adversity in your life. And you never know how severe, and, and I, I'm, I, when I look at the screen, I see many of you that I know your adversity. So please, adversitology.com or go to Amazon, order Adversitology, Frank McKinney, because it's newly released. It helps with the ratings, number one. Number two, it helps with the other broadcasts they do. And every time a book is purchased, 150 to 200 kids are fed in Haiti. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. You want some, you want some light in your life. You want some joy in your life. You want some peace in your life. Step out, please. How many people want to call right now? That many should be order and more so because order three or four copies to give out as gifts for birthdays this year, a holidays, Order three or four copies, because as soon as you hit that order button, think of the kids standing in line. I've been there, folks. I was there, and one kid said, no, I'm not eating. They said, you're not eating today? He said, no, I ate yesterday. Please let them have it. Folks, if that doesn't touch you, I'm going to ask you to hang up the call right now. Because and if you if you can't buy one of these books because you lack the funds, then I'm going to tell you you need this book. Because you're allowing adverse adversity to rule your life and you have that scarcity mentality. Please, I'm asking you to do that. One other thing, some housekeeping, that's it. I'm almost at 400. We, we are almost at 400 members here. The Mind Body Mastermind in Facebook. I want to put that in the chat or Tiffany, if you're there, it's a little bit easier if you can do it. Uh, let's see, chat. Uh, I'll put that in there. Uh, and then I'm going to put adversitology in there while I'm here. Uh, don't order from Frank directly. He wants you to order off of Amazon because it helps with the um, ratings. Uh, and that would be fantastic. And then if you're in with the XP, I'm going to put Ashley's. Again, these are all works of the heart, my friend. Uh, please uh, get into these. And Sandy stirred our heart last week. And, and um, what an incredible story of triumph. And today she's going to come back and even give us more. So thank you all very much. Um, for, you know, participating, uh, buy a book, buy two, buy three, feed a bunch of kids in Haiti, change your life. Um, John Whelan, I see you on the call. You're talking about adversity. He almost died. Uh, his physical ailments he went through. He started reading a book. He took a picture. He saw Frank at a book show on Saturday. Have you started reading it yet, John? Have you gotten into it yet? I, uh, I'm on the 10th page. I started last night, Fred. Wow. Unbelievable. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I never realized how severe it was. Uh, and then the way he conquered, I mean, this was a deadly, deadly leukemia who killed it just, just had killed something similar, killed a friend of his. What a story. And he's, he's totally 100% cured, totally 100% cured at versatology.com or go to Amazon at versatology. Okay. So last week, for those of you who were not on the call, we had this young lady. Look at her. Where is she? Where is she? She just disappeared on my screen. There she is to my right now. See, she moved around. And look, right above her on my screen, who's that other young lady above you? Terry's iPhone. Who is that? Who's There's Terry's mom? iPhone? There's mom. <laughs> Terry, how are you? 
Uh, last week, if you missed the story, you know, Sandy, who, you know, raised really well and so on and so forth, but life circumstances, life crisis, um, you know, circumstances happened. 2013, a divorce with a four-year-old. Um, Sandy mentioned she had fallen in love with the idea of falling in love, didn't realize the effect it would have on her. But in 2015, divorces with a six-year-old and didn't realize the effect that all this was going to have on her. Eventually, she got to the point with the inability to breathe. That then led into something where she was scared to death. She couldn't move. She suddenly started going into, and here she was a very sharp, on the ball professional in the pharmaceutical field and uh, got to the point where she was scared to death. That then started having some physical consequences, went into an immune, uh, 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 autoimmune diseases, uh, arthritis. I mean, she named it to 13 prescriptions, um, you know, to a point where she didn't think she was going to live, number one. Number two, she even said publicly last night, you're talking about being authentic. I mean, uh, last week, authentic, transparent, and vulnerable, that she was to the point of where she really didn't want to live. And what and, and what was there to live for? It was so bad. It was the swelling and the steroids. I mean, what, a, what an unbelievable story. Then other things, and then liver failure. And then an angel comes to her rescue, an angel named Amber. Her dear friend she grew up with, they were so close. They were un inseparable. They were like sisters. She actually calls her her sister, Amber. They were named, they was known as San and Am, right? San and Am. <laughs> San and Am came from Florida and actually relocated to North Carolina to help you, right, Sandy? She did. She did. She was a naturalist. She she was all into natural medicine. She was into um, you know, really helping people heal. So she went up there and said, Hey, you're gonna do everything I tell you to do. And she healed Sandy, literally healed her, turned her life around. She lost weight. She got off all the prescription meds and da, 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 da. Then they started flipping. They wanted to start doing something different and flipped houses. And they had got this bright idea to flip houses. And it looked like it was going to go really well, went really well in the beginning. They now, Sandy wanted to throw, Amber wanted to throw a, I'm going to live party for Sandy. Is that what it was? They were going to, is that the name of the party? It was. Something yeah. like that. I'm going to live party. And as she goes over to her sister's house, her angel's house, Amber's house, to see her, she finds her dead in a bathtub. Now, folks, if that's not adversity, okay, boom, 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 boom. I don't know what is. So you're talking about adversity. So, uh, Anyway, Sandy, thank you for sharing that story last week. But what's amazing, what's amazing is, first of all, your mom, your angel, your mom is the one that really got you through the really, really dark times, of course. And uh, and by the way, uh, Terry, Frank, on Saturday night at the uh, event of the uh, had his mom there uh, when he was going through his leukemia in this battle for two years. He didn't let anyone know. There's only very few. His mom was one of them. His wife, of course, his daughter. Uh, his oncologist, of course, and uh, his spiritual advisor. But anyway, uh, he was he had his mom come up on stage. It was beautiful. Um, but anyway, with that story, but what's really amazing is how just in the last three years that this woman's life, she just took charge. She just finally said, hey, enough's enough. So with that, she uh, I'm going to let you take over from here, Sandy. You, you did the house flips. You finally got recovered from, you never got, you're probably still not recovered from your sister's death because uh, that's forever. Um, but something happened there where you said, okay, enough's enough. I'm going to go from the flipping houses. And then you've got some kind of something spark, something where you thought maybe there's something different. And then that's when you start to think about maybe multifamily. So you take it from where we left off last week and where I just left off, because I want to have enough time to get into the practical how a real estate agent can go from what you went through just to flipping houses and now going into multifamily and added how many multi-millions in net worth in the last three years? Five million. Five so, million yeah. in net worth. Yep. Folks, let me, let me just repeat that. That's five million in net worth. Why do you think I've been telling you for the last three years, think outside the box, get, get rid of the circumstances. Don't allow anything to rule your life. Take control, attitudinal healing, attitudinal development is because of this. You need to think outside the box. Um, so 
how did that just give us the start and 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 then how you got there and then what prompted it and then how anyone else can do that and then uh and then we'll get, allow questions so as sandy's talking start putting your questions and stuff in the ch in the chat okay so go ahead sandy you take it from there you are one or two house flips and now you're going into multifamily. how'd that happen awesome well thank you and thank you for letting me come back ashley chris a few of those that have reached out to me it's been um it's been awesome connecting with people. Listen, that's how we grow. That's how we scale our companies. And um, it's interesting where we where we can put ourselves. The actions we take today are, are going to be where we're living and how we're living a year from now. So let me give you an example of that. Um, February 2020, that's uh, when I actually entered liver failure. I was diabetic, tachycardic, obese, severe hypertension, heart disease, RA, asthma, chronic cough, depression, anxiety, suicidal, ADHD. I was sweating, confused, shaking. I didn't have a memory. I was talking gibberish half the time. Um, Today, I can hold a conversation. Today, I can run around the block. Today, I can play tennis. I don't use an inhaler. I don't take pharmaceuticals. I am a healthy 43-year-old. So um, that was February 2020. February 2021, um, I was actually getting back in, um, in into my career world as a pharmaceutical rep, and that's what I did for 20 years. I, I loved what I did. Um, I was still having hiccups along the way, uh, but I think I was considering a career change. Um, obviously, we were now in the midst of COVID, and I had time to really soak into doing some learning, and I chose to invest in myself. Um, as Fred said, my sister, my, my business partner was gone. Uh, that idea of taking my career in that way was that opportunity was no longer available. So um, I think when we stop and we look at our environments and instead of asking why, why are we here? Why this happened to me? How can we get out of it? How can we move forward? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I want to be? Those are the questions that we need to start asking. So more than anything, me sharing my transition into multifamily, I hope that you understand that it really was a mindset shift for me. It was undoing my own belief systems because even in February, 2021, I, I was healthy at that time. Um, I was still having some speech impediments with my job, but I was able to do my job. Um, here's the thing. I think what it takes is, so anyways, February, 2021, I'm doing my job. Uh, that summer I, I get on a plane. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm doing a lot of, um, webcasts, YouTube universities. I'm learning about crypto. I'm learning about stock trading. I'm learning about like, where's my passion at this point, going through pharmaceutical induced liver failure, losing my sister because she didn't have two pills and a ruptured ulcer. I wasn't too confident in the idea of selling pharmaceuticals. Let's just call it a spade a spade here. And the drug I sold was for a side effect of another drug. So just to top it all off, it was like irony at its best. So it's no wonder I get in front of a doctor and start stuttering, right? Um, that's just where I was. I, I couldn't explain it. It was like the Tower of Babel story. You, you hear these things or that movie, Liar, Liar, and He Can't Talk. That was me in real life. And it was flipping embarrassing. So what happened is my conversations with doctors became less about the drug that I was selling and more about my PTSD and the treatment that I was on and what was happening. So then I felt like, okay, I'm kind of stealing from the company here because I'm not really selling the drug full time. We're talking about, and anyhow, um, so that was kind of my motivation. We all need a motivation or some type of disruption sometimes to break us out of what we know, what we think and what we're doing. Because at that time, my mindset was, was a I'm healthy B I I'm going to work forever maybe it's an advocate role in the pharmaceutical world maybe I'm doing investing on the side whatever it is but I, I was a house I owned a house had a second house I wanted to pay those off I'm a money saver by nature all my bonuses especially when I got sick um, with a diagnosis of RA in 2015 I naturally started saving my bonuses. I didn't think I would be here for a long period of time. So, um, you know, I was thinking for my daughter, I have a 14 year old now. Um, that, that actually ended up becoming my best blessing to have that capital to do what I do now later in life. I didn't know it at the time. At the time, I thought I was preparing for a whole different future. Um, so here's the thing, crypto, not my game. <laughs> Stock trading, we all tried to become stock traders during COVID. Bad idea, not my game. 
Real estate, I know. Uh, my grandfather, he owned 11 homes when he was killed by a drunk driver when my mom was 11. It's the reason that my grandma was able to support my mom and her sister and carry them on. From a young age, um, our first house my parents bought when I was in sixth grade, and it was a fixer upper for sure. But from there, I watched them continue to build and build until they were living in a lake house. Um, so for me, buying my first house, zero down, I did that when I was uh, 19 years old. I bought my first duplex at 21. I understand the benefits of real estate. I understand how to flip a house. I understand how to make money. Um, and I understand how to run a business. What I didn't understand is how to make money when I was sleeping, how to make all this money work for me that um, I was earning. You can go and flip a house and you could make 50K, but you don't get to keep that. And it was funny. I went to the closing table um, on one of the houses that we, the house that Amber and I flipped. And I thought, well, I'm just going to take, you know, 50K of that and I'll put the other towards the 1031. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sandy, it doesn't work that way. 100% either goes to the 1031 for your next investment or none of it. There is no, let's pull some cash out of this. So I was thinking, this is stupid. I'm just going to keep flipping houses. How am I going to get paid from this? That's when I learned about investing in income producing assets. So I got on a plane. I went to a three-day conference. And I'll tell you, anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. I hope if anything, I show you that anybody can do this. They are the same steps to take for every single person. It's just a matter of learning those steps. There is so much information out there, and I want to help you learn those steps if that's what you want to do. But I feel like everybody should own an apartment complex, okay? There's plenty of them out there. There um, are plenty value adds. Um, what I learned during COVID, and it's not necessarily because these are slumlords, but the access to get to these units was tied up for nearly two years. That means naturally there's a lot of deferred maintenance that has occurred on these apartment complexes in the past two, three years. Well, what happens is now the landlords or the owners, they don't have the capital to go in there and fix it up. That's where you come into the picture. And that's where there's so many opportunities right now to acquire these. And that's one of the things that I teach, the scripts on how to acquire these, how to have a conversation with a seller, give them three choices. When the phone call ends, they're either selling it to you or partnering with you. So you have options. You do, This mindset that you don't know what to do, learn what to do. The, the mindset that you don't have the money to do it, you don't need the money to do it, okay? There's plenty of money. If a deal is a deal, there the money, there's so much money available right now. That's, that's not your concern. I'll give you the lenders. I'll give you all the money. Not a big deal. What your concern is, is getting your mindset. You're, you, the goal of working till you're 60, of putting your money in a 401k, of working five days a week to take two weeks off a year. These things that we do, it's a different, we're in a different time now. We're in a different time. Those uh, belief systems and those ways, they worked for our parents and our parents' parents, um, but they don't work for us now. We're, we're in a new game, but we're trying to play with the old rules. That's one of the things that I learned. And Grant Cardone, um, I've done so much coaching. I still do coaching with him. Um, I've been to a couple. I've rolled out my deal with him in front of 400 people. We've crunched the numbers. Um, so huge inspiration for me, him and his wife, Elena. Um, and then additional coaching. I, I recommend everybody gets coaching, mentoring. If you're trying to take advice from those around you, and this is really sad because those around you are your friends and your family. They love you. They want to see you do well. But when they don't understand something and it seems really big, they're going to try and protect you. You sure that's a good idea? Where, where did you hear this? Sounds like a scam to me. Make a million dollars in nine months. You sure about this? That's not what you want in your head. Get away from that. Do not discuss your ideas with those people. I'm not saying leave those people, but I'm saying get in a room with people who are doing it and doing it better than you and start sharing your ideas because that's where you're going to get people that say, hey, let me help you do it. Hey, I got someone you can call. Hey, I got a guy. It's all about mindset. It's funny. We ask people for relationship advice. You haven't been through what I went through. Why am I asking you how I'm going to live my relationship um, or my, my career? I, I can't. 
go to my friend who's a residential real estate broker and ask her what she thinks about this deal on this 24 unit of value add. Either A, she's going to tell me that's awesome, go for it because she loves me and wants to pump me up or B, she's going to be like, whoa, how are you even going to do that? Either way, it's not good for my head. I need to be around people who own thousand doors, 1500 doors, 10,000 doors and say, what do you think of this deal? Those are the people that look at me and go, Sandy, you're thinking a little bit too small here. Okay. You already played the game. You did it with 12 units. You've done it with 50. Why are we still playing in the little games here? Those are the people I need talking to me. And that's where I've come is like, I've learned my mistakes. Um, so anyways, let me get back to that. I get on the plane, uh, July, 2021. Grant Cardone at this time was just blowing up my email, my Facebook, all this stuff about his stuff. I'd been on the webinars. I'd done his sales training back in pharmaceutical days. And now I just wanted to understand this idea of forced appreciation, buying something, fixing it up while it's paying me to do that. Because during a house flip, I'm not making any money. Those are my all holding costs. I'm making a mortgage payment. I'm paying for the resources to fix it. I'm paying when the contractors don't show up or when I got to hire a new guy. It's just a lot of costs. And then you're waiting and hoping the market's going to cooperate with you so you can make your highest and best at the end. I liked that plan. I, I thought it was a solid plan. I thought I'll do two or three of those a year. And I'll retire that way. That all changed for me when I understood uh, I was playing in the, in the wrong game. That is great to earn money. That is a job. House flipping is a job. Wholesaling property, working as a realtor, as a broker, these are jobs. What I learned from Grant is do your job and do it well. Make as much money as you can doing it. And then you take that money and you put it, use it as a tool. Money is a tool. So, right, I also didn't have debt at this time when I went to, to this meeting in July 2021, okay? I had no credit card debt. Both my houses almost paid off. Uh, money hoarded in the savings account. Um, I was feeling really confident about life. Today, if you come ask me for a cash loan, good luck to you. <laughs> uh, my cash is all deployed. I've learned cash is trash. I mean, obviously, I think you should always have enough that's sitting in there for five to six months. But other than that, my cash is in assets. I've got 50 units in St. Croix, um, over 1,000 doors with Cardone, 12 units here in Charlotte, a single family in Indian Trail. I collect checks every month from these assets, okay? My money is there. I didn't give them my money. These are two, five, four year holds. In a couple of years, I'm gonna get that chunk of money back that I put in. Plus I get to keep the payments I'm receiving every month. Plus I now have ownership in it. So I have infinite returns. Plus I get part of the depreciation costs on my own taxes and my ownership is growing. So now I take that same capital, say 200K and I deploy it into another deal. Where I had it over here, that deal's still paying me every month forever until or until they dispose of that asset. If they dispose of it, meaning sell it, well, then I get my percentage of profits at that time. If they keep it and refi it, I, I just keep collecting my monthly checks. And that's how we, we build wealth. We generate wealth by having multiple streams of income we do not have to work for. I can go on vacation with my mom. I can go sit in St. Croix in one of my rentals for a week. My paychecks will still come in. I don't show houses. I don't list houses. I, I'm not a commercial broker. I'm not a residential broker. The way I earn my money now is sponsoring deals. So I hold hands for people who are just like me and say, here's the thing. Let's go find an asset together. I'm going to teach you how to acquire it. I'm going to teach you how to fund it. I'm going to teach you how to manage it, how to insure it, how to collect on it, how to protect yourself under an LLC. There are These are just steps. Sometimes I think we just get so scared that it's not possible. The only reason and where that fear comes from is not being in the right room, not having the right information. I will tell you, once you invest in yourself and you understand this information and you don't act on it, it'll become one of your life's biggest regrets because you're going to watch people around you just continue to build wealth. And what we know now in the market today is a lot of multifamily people who got into this investing world two years ago and calculated their after repair value to be a certain amount today. Well, our market has changed. That, that Those values do not exist today. So they overvalued themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? They did a two-year loan and that, and that, that loan is due. This is where we have distressed people in distressed situations. This is where 
you get the information, you get the tools, you get the team, and you go in and you help them out. You acquire that property, you take it over, you take it to the next level. It saves them because they have the chance to do it all over again. They didn't lose it all. Because if you don't help them, they're going to lose it all. The bank will take it. They're not going to be able to sponsor another project. And that's that. That's a shame because they were on the right track and they can't help what the market did. That's one of the first things I teach people is let's, first of all, you don't enter a deal without an exit strategy. You need to know what you're going to do. Is it going to be a two-year hold, a four-year hold? And in four years, what are you going to do? Are you going to refinance it? What will the value be on that property in four years? You better know that before you even put that offer in on it. Right? Um, so with that said, I went there. I, I was intrigued by this idea. And the reality is, is it was much less risk. Um doing 12 units or more that's when doing less than 12 units you're still setting yourself up with risk unfortunately um if, if you have six and two move out the way that the leverage works in today's world with our rates you need to cash flow if you're not cash flowing beyond your debt it's not it's not a deal we don't pay to get into deals we don't use our own money to fund these deals your renters pay your debt service they pay for your rehab um and you walk away from a deal. You will underwrite probably 100 deals before you close on your first one. That's important. When I started out, I was underwriting 10 deals a day. That was part of my training and coaching. Literally going through LoopNet, finding apartments, looking at the rent, the expenses, calculating the value. How could I add value? Here's the cool thing about multifamily. Anything, I'd say 12 doors and up is what you need to be focused on. It doesn't take, $100, $200 bumps in rent to change a value significantly on an asset. You can get an asset 50 units and bump that rent 20 bucks a unit just because you're the new owner. Then you go in and you actually add some amenities, some security, some things, and you're bumping it. Every time you bump that unit rent, that changes your net operating income. Anything that's five units or more is not valued on comps. It is valued on the operating income that asset produces. So whether you increase the net operating income or you decrease the expenses, one way or another, you are just force appreciating this building. So if you can find something that has deferred maintenance, that's under market rents, and it's not if you can find something, these deals are everywhere, everywhere. Um, that's an opportunity for you. It only takes one deal, two, to change your life. Grant kept saying that to me over and over and over again. One deal can change your life. One deal allowed me to make more passive income than I was making in the pharmaceutical world. 20 years, President's Club winner, um, sales trainer. I, I, was, I wasn't mediocre at what I did. I play hard. When I play, I play to win. Um, and when I don't, I can be a sore loser as I, my family will not play Monopoly with me since I was 12 years old and through the board at the dinner table. I have not been allowed to play that game. Every year for Christmas, I get that stupid board game from one of my family members as like this funny joke or something. And I literally have like, I don't know, 12 board games, Monopoly for this, for that, for that. And I, 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 the plastics on them because I guess I'm that competitive, but that drive and that hustle, it comes from somewhere. That's one of the things I think that with this mindset, I, what I love about Fred is he digs in. What is your why? You have to know that before you get into this, because if you think it's just going and buying an apartment and collecting rents, it's not that easy. It's simple and there are steps. But easy is not the word I would use. This is a lot of work. Sh Shandy, if I may, yep. um, for those that are not the big famous Monopoly players, <laughs> you know, I want to I want to narrow in on the mindset, folks. You are selling property. You're listing and selling property. Chris Dub, you're listing and selling one now. You should not sell it to anybody. You should buy it. The one you talked to me about yesterday. You should figure a way to talk to Sandy to buy that property in Tallahassee. When you, well, after I hung up yesterday, I said, why isn't she buying that? Um, so, cause that's what they're going to do. The one who's one of the tied up 90 days. I just, after I hung up, I went, 
I think someone's trying to tie it up, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, just think about it. We'll talk about that later. But for those that are on the call that are saying, gee, I, last month I wasn't able to pay my rent. Um, uh, I think I can get it this month, though, and blah, blah, blah. You know, and they're not in that. How can we fix their minds that they realize that time, money, and circumstances are not the issue here? It's mindset. Time, you can always manage your priorities differently. You know, okay, so the time is not the issue. Money is not the issue because money will flow to good ideas and good deals, correct? Absolutely. And circumstances are not the issue. So it is our mindset. There's no question about it. So today, if someone has the right mindset, like Chris Dove, I'm going to use her as an example. When she first, she and I first met when I was doing her onboarding. She came in with Jessica Baskies. I said, Chris, you're branded as a residential agent. You want to brand as a real estate expert. Keep your antennas up. And then just at that one comment, I said, you can do anything, commercial, blah, 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 blah. Just that one coming a week later, eight days later, she's selling a Dollar General store, all because of a mindset shift, okay? So it's not nonsense. It's all about the antenna, what antenna you have up. So for those that are on that call, they come across today, a 14-unit building that looks like it's a little bit run down. They happen to, they're smart because their antennas are up. They're going, oh, that looks kind of run down. I wonder what's going on with that property. It's not for sale. It's not on the market, but there's, there's got their antennas up enough going, there might be something there. Now they realize that the owner is absentee uh, and uh, it's kind of it's been sitting there and they make a telephone call. And gosh, yeah, I might sell it. Why? What do you got in mind? Okay. Take it from there. Okay. Those are my favorite. Anybody who's saying I might sell it, uh, they're going to sell it. Okay. Right. That that's a, Hey, make me an offer right there. So first things first, napkin math, right? Let's talk about that. When you find an asset, you need to know, and in commercial or a commercial, multifamily, multi-unit income producing assets, we're not trying to get a deal here, okay? The numbers are the numbers. That's what I love about this part of the business. There are no emotions in this for me. Either the numbers work or they don't. And have a good day. If they do, let's do this. If they don't, I wish you peace. Bye. Um we, we don't spin our wheels trying to make something work with this guy. So what you do is you say, all right, we've got 14 units, okay? And what income is this property currently producing? What rents are you getting, all right? So you, you get that number and you're gonna take that monthly income and you're gonna times it by 12, okay? There is your gross annual income, okay? Now... You're going to say, what expenses do you have? What taxes do you have? Um, what management fees do you have? All right. They're going to give that all to you. That's just good for you to know. In your underwriting, you can't assume that someone is managing it effectively, especially when it comes to expenses. Most of these value adds, their expenses have been done on a paper portfolio, and it's just a circus. They don't know. So take what they have, and then you go ahead and you underwrite it at 40%. Just cover yourself, be conservative, 40% expenses from that gross annual income number you've got. So now you've got a 60% left. That 60% becomes your net operating income, all right? So your NOI, and these are all terms too, like I would love to teach you all. And once you start learning this language, it, you're going to come natural. So don't get caught up in the NOI, GOI, IR, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, you get the net operating income. Now you take that and you divide it by your market cap rate. That is the value of that building. The cap rates in Charlotte were running at six, six and a half percent. Okay. If you don't know the cap rates in your area, get on CoStar or LoopNet and just look at ads from brokers. It says right there in the ads, current cap rate, cap rate, cap rate. Go ahead and look at 10 of those. Come up with the average cap rate. Now you got a cap rate for your zip code. The cap rate, help, help, help everyone out. Just so you don't, what is cap rate? Explain the cap rate to them. So capitalization rate, that's your rate of return if you were to pay cash for the for the property. Okay. And every market and every market kind of has a range of you know what it is, right? Like Dollar General stores that Chris is selling is a 6.2% cap rate. So the investor who puts the money in is earning 6.2% as if they had it in the bank. Capitalization Correct. rate, right. Okay. Correct. Um, the cap rate is not something you're going to have an impact on going up or down. 
Um, you might have a broker who wants to sell it at 3%. Just because he wants to do that doesn't mean that's the market cap rate. And what you need to understand is these cap rates are important because that's how your leverage comes into play. If you calculate something at a 5% cap rate and you go to the bank and they're doing the 7% market rate, you're going to have a problem when it comes to getting leverage. So your underwriting is very, very important. But bottom line is you come up with that value. You come up with that number. You call that guy back and you say, hey, this is what your business is worth. Because anything five units or more, I essentially look at it as a business. You're buying a business. It's a real asset. It is real estate. It is the best business you can buy in today's world. It's not going anywhere. It's not depreciating on you. It's paying you to own it. And it's infinite returns. So with that being said, you call this guy up and you say, all right, this is what we've got for a value. I'd like to purchase it. Um, you put in a letter of intent and then it goes from there. With that underwriting, the next step is, how are you going to bring value to that asset? What can you do to improve it? How, what renters can you put in these 14 spaces? Now you calculate what that new gross annual income number would be. Okay, and you take out your expenses again, and you've got a new net operating income. You divide it by the same cap rate, and there's your spread. So if you got, if you want, I can share my screen and kind of give you like a quick overview of a case study that I did. Yeah, um, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So let me and and by that. the way, folks, as some of you may have already checked out. You're going to oh, see too complicated, too complicated. What I want this to do is spur you on to saying, hey, I'm going to get more into this. I'm going to watch YouTube, how to do a cap rate. YouTube, 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 university, YouTube, university, anything you hear. And if you start stressing out, oh, oh, oh too much overload, stop, just make a note and say, I'm going to go to YouTube afterwards. I'm going to type in the word cap rate. And I'm going to say understanding cap rates. So, you know, again, Sandy said this starts with a mindset. You've got to have the mindset that you have the capability of doing this. So go ahead, Sandy. And, and you do, you do. Anybody who thinks that they don't like reach out to me, you, well, you do. Yeah. Yeah, before you say, reach out to me, I don't want someone going and finding a little listing and calling, hey, Sandy, I just saw this listing on MLS. You're, you're, you're worthy of more respect than that. You send a real nice email and saying, hey, I've already talked to him. Here's all the details. Here's all the facts, you know, because you respect Sandy's time, but she's there if you need her. But, you know, you got to have some information. Okay, go ahead, Sandy. Certainly. And, and for anybody who does want to dig into this, I will tell you, um, I, I do work with uh, Brock Zeeben for coaching. I'm part of that leadership team. I have been for over a year now. And this is something that we do do. We are hosting a webinar. It's a private event. If you're interested, it's next Friday at one o'clock. Put your email in the chat and I'll get you that information. Do you, uh, have, do you have the information you can put in the chat? I don't. His his oh, media okay. and all that, they're putting it together. Okay. But it's an hour and a half webinar. Um, it's interactive. It's between 10, 20 people. And it's step by step how to do this. Okay. Uh, Anybody interested, put your email in the chat. And then Tiffany, if you'll copy the chat, make sure we have the chat and get it to Sandy, please. So uh, this is Buffett Landing Townhomes. This is actually um, a property that I own um, with my parents. So we were boots on the ground with this. As I kind of all told you, this was the case study that I presented back to Grant Cardone when I was done. So um, that was a cool experience as well. Here's the numbers on this. The net operating income when I bought it, 67,000. So bringing in about six, seven grand a month, okay? Um, right now we're at 15, 16 K a month and we're converting, um, additional units to, uh, short-term and midterm rentals to drive up the NOI on it, um, for another refi. Cause we've already had the pleasure of refining, pulling out some cash, which by the way, when the bank hands you 150 K tax-free debt-free money that you don't have to report to anybody, that's a good feeling. That's the money that you go and buy your toys with, your cars, your vacations. This earned income, this money that you're earning, A, you've already paid tax on it. So put it into something to where it's going to work for you. Don't that, I don't use earned income anymore to buy anything fun. Like if I want something, I need an asset that's going to pay for that. If I want a car and the car is going to cost me 500 bucks a month. I need an asset that's going to pay me 500 bucks a month. So that's possible. You can do that. Um, here's the thing. This is in Charlotte. Bought it for 1.3. We ended up putting 350K into this property. Now, keep in mind, during this rehab, the renters are paying the mortgage. Now, now, Sandy, now, Sandy, someone came across this, not 
you know, that didn't have your income, didn't have this. No, go back to that. Go back to the project summary. You said I put 350 cash. Where did 350 uh, rehab costs? Where did 350 rehab costs come from? The bank. So you take that out and an additional loan. Um, all your money is going to come from other people. Okay. The what you're doing is you need to have a plan in place. That's what I help you do, a plan. It's called a stabilization plan, a scope of work, a budget. And you need to have a very professional team who's in charge of it, who's done this and can do it. It's and a strict that, timeline. How much cash did you put into this deal? Um, well, this one I had a 1031, so overall about 400K. Okay, someone's on the call. They come across this property. No one else knows about it. They want to do this deal. They don't have that 400K. They don't have a four, the an exchange to do they're broke uh but they want to get into multifamily. is this deal still possible absolutely and that's <laughs> where you become an acquisition uh partner so in the world of multifamily, let me tell you this partners we, we in our brains we think partner means 50 50 okay in this world partner I, I partner with a lot of people partnerships can be 50 50 they can be 10 90 they can be 40 20 whatever it is this is such a, this is a world where you want to work with as many people as you can and that, and you take a piece of it. It's called a partnership. So for you to bring a deal to the table like this and you that's a 10% ownership in the asset, right? So you don't have to have a dollar. You don't even have to do the scope of work. You don't have to stabilize it. You don't have to take any more part of it. If the, if the asset is closed and you were the reason it was acquired, you own 10%. That's pretty crazy. By the way, like, by the way, you also can get a commission. <laughs> on top, yes, it's like win, win, win. When you have your, and that's why, by the way, I keep my broker's licenses. A, there's referrals. B, I can close my own deals. I can. It just opens you up to take another piece of the pie. The and North that's Carolina, the North Carolina deal. You're getting a commission, right? Possible. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And the new homes that I'm building, so I'm not putting a penny into it and I'm building 16 new townhomes, but because I'm the project sponsor, there's ownership that comes along with that. Um, so back to this deal, absolutely. This would be something anybody could do this deal, whether you have the money or not. Uh, if you have 1031 money, I recommend putting it into something like this all day long. But um, so the after repair value, bottom line is, after the rehab, after our closing costs, our financing costs, um, what it would cost to refi long term, so 2%, blah, blah, blah. You've got your, your total costs here. When you look at the flip profit, and this was 10 months post uh, purchase, so January, and then in October, we refinanced. This is when we had our new, our new value of 2.9. Okay, so in that 10 months, we had um, made over a million dollars, um, which is pretty cool. So at that refi, you, you think? Could, huh? You think? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, I don't know where else you could do that, but that's pretty cool. So um, here's the thing. When you look at the time to rehab, 12 months, that that's realistic. Anybody can do this. And um, I want to kind of show you. So these, the, my, my, where does the name Buffett, where does the name Buffett? Why do you call your name Buffett? You know, my sister and I, we, we had, um, we had plans to retire in Margaritaville, uh, and float down the, they always have like these winding rivers at Margaritaville, Jimmy Buffett. And she, I pictured her smoking her pot, me with my Chardonnay and, you know, <laughs> go figure she's not here. And now I don't drink at all, but, um, who knows, maybe I'll smoke the pot for her. But anyway, <laughs> um, the other thing is, you know, I really believe run your money like Warren, learn how to run your money like Warren so you can live like Jimmy. It's possible. <laughs> You're not good at Phil to be sitting in St. Croix knowing my bills were just getting paid, getting paid. And the freedom to just make decisions with what you do during your time. Do I just sit around? No, I work my butt off. I work 10, 12 hour days. Right. Um, and I do it because why wouldn't I? Um, it's Sandy, because you have a 930 stop, hard stop, right? It actually might got pushed out to a little bit later time. So oh, good, I'm good. Oh, good, good. I was I was feeling a little bit rushed. Um, the um, uh, a lot of people only get on for an hour, but um, it, some people say, is this a document you can share? Um, is that? Sure. Document? Yeah. Uh, if you can just copy and put, is that a PDF? You can put a link. Uh, you can copy and paste and put it in the uh, chat for them. But um. <laughs> But it, again, folks, I got to, because, you know, I know how our 
our mind works, right? Because you're multitasking. You're doing, oh, yeah, yeah it's just, this is great, but it's not for me. You know, and please, please, please take a breath. You just put on your goal sheet that you're going to learn this. You do, you want to learn investing. It's amazing to me of all my years in this business. That's when I did that 1990 business planning that I helped a lot of people with uh, is that that SMOS plan. You notice there's a lot of investing in there. The people who did that are multimillionaires today, myself included, where I was able to acquire so many units. And one was right under my nose for two years. I didn't even have the mindset to buy it myself until I got the mindset. And then it came to me. So a $4 million equity hit immediately. So you've got to you got to keep your mind open and you got to you got to commit if you're going to be in the real estate business be in the real estate business not just the residential agent be, you do some investing do, you know learn this stuff learn this stuff um so in the stuff that you might be listing you know chris has an opportunity to listing some stuff up in tallahassee right now and as she hung up yesterday someone was trying to snatch it from her a, a buyer 90 day due diligence or whatever it was. And I thought after I hung up, oh, wait a minute, she ought to just call the seller and say, hey, look, let me partner with you. Let me take over as you, you, and give her her equity out or buy her out, blah, blah, blah. But there's so many opportunities out there. It's incredible. And now everything I'm reading, the CRV, the commercial real estate holdings, oh my gosh, there are going to be so many opportunities to convert some of these office buildings into, into uh, hotels. The people in Baltimore, I'm from Baltimore originally, that the downtown area, I remember the first person who bought a warehouse and converted a condo, everyone thought they had lost their mind. Well, go downtown Baltimore now. All of them were converted to condos. So there's just so much opportunity for us. But if you don't have the mindset, you won't do it. So I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sandy. You, you continue. Oh, yeah, no problem. So um, here's what we're looking at. Keep in mind, too. This acquisition, there were people that was 12 units, um, so it was half vacant. Uh, there was a lot of deferred maintenance, as you can see here. Um, the goal isn't to get people to move out. The goal is to bring their home up to a, a nice place to live. We all deserve a nice, clean, habitable place to live. And as a landlord, that's your responsibility. If this is how you're running a show and you're collecting rents, you should not own that building. And, and I will do all I can to take it from you. This is not okay with me. Like, and if you're taking subsidy money on top of it, you're collecting rents from the government, from paychecks, from tax dollars that other people are paying. And this is what you're providing. Now I'm really going to take it from you. So my drive comes from this project alone has inspired me to go after value add, value add, value add, because this is so not okay. And I had no idea this is kind of how things were going. Um, my sweet mom in there. So um, we, we do a monthly newsletter. We, we bring a community. That's the other thing. It's the idea of getting a value add apartment building isn't to go in there. And some people do teach it like this, but empty it out, redo it, get it new client. The reality is people do live there. This is their home. So I think the cool thing is, is everybody that was there, they're still there. Um, they are happy. They're elated. They want to have parties. We we do a cookouts. We do. It's a community now. It's a neighborhood. Um before, you know, it was just garbage everywhere. It was a little, I wouldn't want to go down there after dark. Um, I'm happy being on the property at any time now. It's a place that I'm proud of. It's a place that the residents are proud of. Um, and the cool thing is, is after you refi, you pull that money out, you just take that and you go do it again. But like you Oops. said, Fred, having these conversations with people, if they have an asset like this and it is deferred and they're truly a good person and you come to them and you say, I'll tell you what, I, I want to finance the whole rehab. I want to partner with you. I will bring this much value to you in 12 months. The only thing I'm asking is 50% of that value. You just became an owner in an apartment complex with no money. And all you did was bring someone a plan. That plan is your first step in the door. Yeah. So that's what we teach. That's what we're doing next Friday. Um, one o'clock is what do those scripts look like? What do you say to that person? It's not that they're, they enjoy collecting those rents for sure. 
but it, their property is becoming a ticking time bomb. It's becoming a capital expenditure yeah. nightmare. Uh -huh. so yeah, it, you know, Sandy, there's so much opportunity coming. Uh, you, you say you want everyone's email to invite them. Is that is? Can you handle that, or is there uh, you want to get? Uh, they a lot of people put their emails in there. We'll get them to you, which is very nice of you to do. Or is there a uh, a way I can announce it to everybody it was on the call either or. why don't I get you the information once it's done I will tell you it is five hundred dollars it is 90 minutes to do coaching is fourteen hundred dollars a month I don't necessarily think that anybody needs to get into the monthly coaching for this um that's a different kind of thing but I do think that whether it's with me or not spend the money get to know the the acronyms the terminology the language understand the scripts on what to say to a seller and your only goal over the next six months for yourself should be to acquire one of these one of them sending that's out, it one one will change your life that's it start sending out three lois a week set goals for yourself you don't know how to do an loi guess what next friday i'm going to give you my loa i'm going to give you my lender request i'm going to give you the list of lenders to send your little lender request to these are all been done by people. This isn't anything you have to go and recreate. All you need is the blueprint. All right. so everyone the still put your email. If you're interested in it, uh, it's $500 for 90 minutes, right? And and, right. and who who's doing this, Brock and you? Brock and myself. And then we'll actually have another individual and we'll have a lender on the call. So you'll have resources. We'll be underwriting a, a call right on the, during the- Oh, webinar. underwriting the deal? What's that? You'll be underwriting a deal on the call? Yep, we're going to do a oh, couple cool. people and write off the loop net. And let's say, okay, we'll put together the LOI and get it out there. Fantastic. I mean, this is about action. It's This is great if you sit here and you learn it. What I've told you is all great stuff. It is all real. It is all truth. It is all doable. So now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to go get a property and talk to an owner today? Probably not because you're still kind of getting your confidence. You've got to know the steps before you do that. Yeah. But I do feel that after the call next Friday, you will be ready to submit an LOI within 10 minutes of hanging up. And that's all you it. need. You need to get I your LOI. It. And then we take the next steps. All the steps are there. The money is there. You just find the property, get it under contract. Fantastic. Uh, so we don't lose a lot of people because it's, it's sometimes you only book till 930. Uh, what question? Raise your hand. Uh, because I, I'm going to go look at the chat. If someone else can, any, am I missing any questions here? Uh, Aletha, go ahead. I think you might've actually answered it in there, Sandy. Thanks again so much to see you again. Um... Oh, awesome. Thanks, Aletha. Oh, missed you. Oh, 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 you said that she already answered it. What was the On question? Friday, the sorry about that. On, on Friday, when you do the 90 minutes, will you be discussing where we should be finding these deals, how to get in touch with these or the specifics of the properties? Awesome. Okay. Yep. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Simon. Yes. Uh, good morning. I was wondering these deals that you look for, you're only looking at an area that, uh, you can physically go and manage or doesn't matter to you as long as the deal is great. And then I mean, like, what's your advice? Because there's different markets that might make sense. Like, like maybe Buffalo is cheaper than here in West Palm to find these multi, multi uh, but would you go that far or should we stay within our own nesting grounds? No, absolutely. Deals are everywhere. So don't be afraid to think outside the box. You're not going to be managing the property yourself. Okay. That's rule number one. So you're going to have property management in place and you'll put a stabilization team together wherever you acquire it. If it's a, if it's a growing area and the market supports multifamily in that area, that's an area. Uh, there are some I would stay away from California, Washington state, um, real blue states where they're not very friendly for uh, tax purposes for landowners. I, I, I personally wouldn't put my money there, but um, I, it, yeah, definitely. Okay. Right now I'm putting an offer in under contract on a deal in um, Clearwater, Florida. So I'm clearly not going to be there managing it, but I know the steps to take and I know how to interview the people that will be managing it. So absolutely. Buffalo, definitely. Are you going to Clearwater to check out the property first before you put this deal in? Or are you just doing everything from the internet? 
Uh, I've actually been there before. That's where my sister lived. And uh, this is a new construction. So it's about a mile from downtown. Um, so there's really nothing that I need to go look at with that. I've done my due diligence on the builder and all of that stuff. Um, the um, and, and, you know, with experts on the ground, be careful. Uh, you mentioned Buffalo. I bought a trail, uh, a mobile home park in Elbridge, New York, one time. The you're talking about a disaster, the snow removal four times in one day. I mean, it cost me a fortune and they were doing it themselves. So their expenses for snow removal were like, you know, 10% of what it really cost me. <laughs> Be careful of those states. Anyway, uh, I put in the chat, Krexky.com. If you really are serious about understanding it, you sign up for Krexky.com, which is a commercial site. Um, because it, it, it's a lot less than LoopNet. It's the same as LoopNet. Uh, do you like Krexky, Sandy? Uh, do you agree with me that it's just as good as LoopNet? Or you absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these. Listen, you you pretend you're looking for an apartment. Go on apartments.com. Look up the places that pop up. If you can see these places don't have newer countertops or newer appliances, there's someone. There's someone that owns that building right there. That's the lead. Right. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, and and to look at the actual deals, and and so you can have your own email, and you can have people writing you. Kreksky.com is a great site that I've been a member of a long time. Oh, uh, Jacob, I'm sorry, man. <clears throat> hey, how's going on? Good morning, Fred. Good morning. How's going on, man? Hey. Good morning. Uh, nothing, man. I want to uh, share with you how to use your personal credit uh, in the multifamily commercial business. It means. Uh, how you leverage your, um, you know, your your relationship with the bank is means like your possibility to have a loan in the commercial space. May, may I may I follow up on top of that with the kind of the add to that question, and I think it might be the, what you're asking, Jacopo, is the um, how many of these do you personally guarantee? Me. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, no, none. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. It's like what I wanna, I wanna uh, understand. If uh, you use personal in some case where you are no, where you are the owner, you are the only owner. It's not like when you do GV with other people. When you are the only owner in some kind of building, uh, how you working? You know. You, for example, you put the down payment, your credit, uh, and go to the bank, to the commercial bank, and show how the the you know the the building make money. How how your strategy when you own for yourself, not with other people. Okay, I got you. So yeah, it's the same. You do it the exact same way as if you were JVing or GPing with another person. So for instance, on Buffett Landing Townhomes, um, I own the company Buffett and Co that bought that building. Um, so it didn't. My personal credit wasn't a factor. It shouldn't be that way. What they're looking at um, now, my portfolio and your experience is a huge factor. These banks want to know that I can have the, the process in place to flip a property, that the plan that I'm bringing to them, I will be able to execute. Um, that is very, very important. As far as your personal credit, your money, um, they're more looking at how is the asset performing today? The way that it's performing today, will it cover the debt service? If that is the case, and there's still room for rehab, banks want to give you the money because that, I mean, should you default, they've got a, a very high performing asset here with equi equity in it. Uh, so I just did exactly that way, uh, just like I would have had it been a JV deal. In this case, normally you use, have, you know, you, you have strategy where you use like, in some case, when you own directly, like your personal uh, uh, loan guarantees means, you know, uh, and in other case, you, uh, you use a JV, like, you know, in other kind of deal, correct? Uh, I think what you're asking is, do I partner with other deals? Yeah, it means you do the majority. Uh, uh, yeah, you do. You have a you know business where you have door, correct? Like yes. in the or or in some case you own directly the building. Correct. But listen, we all run. We all get so much capital. Once your capital capital is deployed, that's where you can either sit and be like, okay, well, I'm a millionaire. Yay for me. Or 
you, you've got to think of the mindset that I'm not in it for me. I, I, I did that. I proved to myself that I don't have to work anymore. I don't have to do this, but I've got parents, I've got siblings, I've got a child. I have got other people for me to sit back and just collect checks is so, I see that as so flipping selfish that that's just not, it's not so, the, but here's the thing, the way for me to grow now is to partner with people. And so if you don't have the capital, that's fine. Partner with people. There are people who have the capital. If you have a plan and you have a way to get that plan implemented, that is your capital. Your capital is between your ears. And that's how you get into a lot of these deals, whether you acquire it and that's your capital, whether you come in and you're like, I can stabilize it by helping you do this, 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 that's your capital. Um, there's so many different ways to become part of a deal, but every single person on this call has the ability to partner with someone on one of these asset acquisitions. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And uh, Sandy, the hotel deal that you that you came across is a good example. You know, you just immediately, when you talk to me, you say, hey, you have this kind of experience. Hey, I may need to talk to you about that. It's amazing how you did that. And you put, and then you're going to get the financing from other places. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Absolutely. Uh, Simon, go ahead. I, I think, Sandy, for most of us, um, it's always been a dream to get to where you are. And we never knew the right road because it just seems like we're on the sidewalk and everybody's passing us by in the highway. So in this course that you're going to uh, do, are you going to show us like, okay, I don't have the greatest credit score after COVID. I had a lot of issues with my previous business and it dro dropped my credit score financially money too. That's one of the reasons I started real estate is to recoup from COVID and make some money faster than traditionally what I was doing. So am I not the right candidate now, even though I, I could put the effort in to find the deals? Because I don't know the partners. I don't know where I could get the capital to, to make this stuff happen. You know, because if it's just based upon my own personal uh, reasons, like I think what Jacob was saying, there's a lot of us are in a situation where we don't have 100,000 set aside to start something or 800 credit score to go to the bank and be intimidated to get refused and stuff like that. So obviously there's other ventures. And so is that some of the stuff that you'll teach? Absolutely. And, and right there, your mindset, we want to tweak that. You are the right candidate. You are the perfect candidate. You are driven. You are hungry. You can do this. Um, look at Grant Cardone, right? So, I mean, gosh, it, drugs at the bottom of the bottom. Here's the thing. Anybody can do this. And you're right. You don't know those people today. You get into this you're going to know those people tomorrow. I'm going to give you the list of lenders to send your request to. I will work with you to do it if you find the property. Um, there are so many people out there that they have already done this way bigger and better than me. And they're the people now that they're grabbing my hand. They're the ones saying, whoa, you're thinking too small. Okay, do this. Nope, you didn't really include this in your underwriting. Those are the first steps for you to get around people who are doing it Maybe not at the top of the moon, but where where I am, where because I was just you not that long ago. It was just July 2021. I learned about this way. My way was to work till I was 60, retire, and save my money and get my debts all paid off. I am uh, $2 million in debt. I'm not afraid of debt. I hope when I die, I'm 20 million plus in debt because for that 2 million in debt, I've got 6 million in equity, <laughs> all right? So debt is your friend. When we start you, looking yeah. at leverage- <laughs> I can tell you've been hanging out with Grant Cardone. <laughs> I, I, to me, uh, cash is a tool. It's a tool. Right. But that's all it is. And I used to have this- a relationship that I loved cash. And the more of it I had, the more secure I felt when my checking would get below a certain amount, I would have anxiety. Like, what is that? It's, it's our belief systems. It's what we were raised to believe with money and, and uh, money is a reflection of your success. If you have money in the bank, that's a problem. That's a problem <laughs> right now. Your money should be in an asset. If you don't know how to acquire that asset, that's where you come to this meeting on Friday. That's where you get on the YouTube. That's where you get on the webinars. That's where you pay the money to go spend a weekend hey, with Grant. 
Yeah, and 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 folks, she's not talking about you go leverage your home. You know, I'm looking no. at Alice in Ohio, right? Uh, Alice, you don't go leverage your home to go buy that apartment complex, and then you so leverage that you get caught. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is strategic understanding of you know, and then pulling in partners, right? Uh, you know, so that that's what we're talking about this is not by foolish in, in the same way grant talks about so anyway i love that one. you sound like grant up on stage i hope i die in debt i i love debt um <laughs> yep yep so uh, anyway we gotta uh we get let's see any other questions um uh anybody okay we got a lot of stuff in the chat here did i miss anything uh tiffany can you take a quick look is there anything that we're Chris, what do you say? Uh, you said something about free or something. Um, what was that about? Um, coach and grateful. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, this is really great, Sandy. Thank you so much. Um, uh, let's see. A lot, lot of people had to run. Uh, we got a bunch of emails there. Tiff, are you going to grab those for us and then send them to me and uh, Sandy? Can you do that? Where's Tiff? Is she here? I'm here. Oh, there you yes, are. I am. All right, you're I gonna guess. grab them, send them, send, send them to when it us. downloads the ch chat for me. I'll be able to send that over. Okay, cool. Uh, awesome, and I'll right. give you a copy of that PDF case study to show you kind of beginning to end numbers, acquisition, the fees. Um, okay, when Tiffany sends us the emails, if you'll hit reply and then send that, and she that way she can post it with this video. Okay. That'd be great. Put your well, you have your contact on there. All right, that's fantastic. Anybody else? Last and final. Because I'm not reading all the chat. I don't know if I missed anything. Nobody? Okay, cool. Uh, Sandy, do you have lenders you like for investment props, uh, HELOCs? And that, uh, do you have any investors that you like? My Smartmortgage.com, I'm telling you, they are very good with that as well around the country. Um, and any lenders that you have, Sandy, that you'll be talking about that Friday? Yep, yep. I'll give you a whole list of lenders. Um, I personally, I like working with brokers on lenders because they do the shopping for you. Um, I used to think that I needed to do every step of the process myself. Um, I need to be out acquiring more deals. That's what I like. That's how what I do best. Um, so, but if you're that person, I'll give you the list of, and you call and send that out, or you just blast out a lender request via email and the terms just come back to you. And then you filter out which terms you like, but credit unions are always a great place to start in your local community. If you're bringing value, whether it's in Buffalo, wherever, if you're bringing value to something in that town, go to a credit union in that town. They want to support you. They yeah. truly do. So uh, the local local banks are really I, I've had the best of luck because I've been in North Carolina, Tennessee, uh, New York, upstate New York local bank. Um, they, they're the best. They're the best. And by the way, you, uh, I just put my uh, my backdrop uh, with smart mortgage. If you just leave a message on that uh, e uh, voicemail there at nine nine two oh promise, uh, leave it and I'll get you in touch with them. Uh, for any type of investment deals, some Holly mentioned something about credit scores. It doesn't matter with asset loans. So let me know and I'll connect you with them as well. Uh, Jacopo, did you have another question or is your hand not from last time? Oh, okay. All right, cool. Uh, all right, folks. Thank you so much, Sandy. Wow. How many of you, some applause, uh, you know, thank you. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, we'll get you back as well. Um, uh, by the way, come April, I've got so many huge, uh, whoops, Fabio, Fabio, you have a question. Oh, oh, you, you've raised your hand. Go ahead. Oh, Fabio. Oh, I think it was just, clap. oh, there you go. All right. I don't know. I think he was clapping, trying, trying to play with it. Um, but anyway, um, I'm going to be taking a break. April, I have so many projects going on. And so Georgia's got some really cool things coming for Wednesday mornings starting April the 1st um, or the first Wednesday in April. <clears throat> but stay tuned. I've got some really interesting things that are taking place <laughs> um, and working on a lot of writing and stuff. So and then Sandy's going to keep me busy with uh, sponsoring, bringing me in on that sponsors. Right, Sandy? Absolutely. You're going to do your <laughs> hotel deal. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that hotel hall for it. Okay, cool. All right, thank you, Terry. Terry, thank you, thank you, thank you for Sandy. You're you're, you're responsible. Wait, wait, one second, you're Fred. One. <laughs> one second, Fred. You put a you put a, 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 um a wrench in the this whole thing. So it's not just apartment complexes; it's, it's hotels too. 
Anything, anything, commercial strip center, what anything it has income. Income, right, Sandy? I mean, you, you income producing assets and anything more than 12 units. Uh, the, the, the higher the doors or units, whether it's storage units, hotel rooms, rental spaces, well, those are all considered units. Um, and anything 12 or more, you're looking at just protecting your debt service and your costs to acquire and rehab, whatever it is. Um, when you get below 12 units of anything, you know, you have three of those empty out. Now you're paying out of your pocket every month on your debt service. Like we don't want to ever have to pay out of your pocket to have an asset. So um, yeah, anything over 12 units, whether it's 12 storage blocks, 12 hotel rooms, whatever well, it well, is. Wouldn't, uh, don't you have to jump through hoops when you buy a hotel with their corporation uh, wait, hey, and hey, their hey, franchises hey, and all that other stuff versus hey, buying them? Hey, hey. Hey, Simon, hey, Simon, make sure you attend that Friday event because no, we're out of time. That's okay, man. But yeah, no, it, it, it's all the same. Investing in, in income producing property, I don't care what it is. It, it's all the same. It, it's it's what is your debt service cover ratio and, you know, uh, it's your cap rate and all that kind of stuff. It can be anything, uh, any income producing real estate. It's And you got to own the real estate with it. Uh, yeah, so it could be it could be almost anything. All right, thank you all so much, uh, Tiff. I know you got a we got a rock and roll here. Uh, you can take over. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut the recording at.